The following program is sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests. Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Insider SA, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to the festive spirit in the Seychelles with TV personality Jonathan Boynton Lee and content creator Gabby Benedict. The Mzansi Youth Choir compose an anthem of hope and self belief. Tastemaster SA winner Max Scaling shares how mindfulness helps manage her OCD. The new brand by designer Zulfa Isaacs is 100% proudly South African. Artist Athan Corsi Quinana's albinism is just another shade of the rainbow. And with his roast chicken, watermelon salad and blueberry cake, Chef Linda's got your festive menu covered. This Christmas, Durban-based food editor and culinary business owner, Chef Linda Mnikati, invited us over to his place to celebrate the season the best way he knows how, through food. Actually, inspiration for cooking comes from my dad. I was his little sous chef who so asked me to do that, to chop that, to put in that. And he was very clean. Hygiene was his first priority in the kitchen. That's where my inspiration, I just tapped into that. I started watching cooking programs, buying food magazines. And then I'll try those recipes from the back of the magazines. At home, the aroma was so inviting. Everyone, the neighbors will come and see and feast. That was my inspiration. Christmas brings people together. Love language is food. And on the Christmas day, that's where proper food is cooked and everyone is back from wherever cities and they're back home and we're feasting on the table like family. Because during the year, we don't get such a time. People are working, they're away. But on Christmas day, we all sit on the table and feast together. Linda's precise nature once saw him consider accountancy. Now it makes him a master baker. Today we are doing my favorite cake, cinnamon and blueberry infused cake. And then we're gonna make a blueberry frosting on top. So here I have dried ingredients, flour here, and then I have my cinnamon, I have my baking powder, I have my icing sugar, and then I have my eggs, milk, oil, sunflower oil, guys. A cake, if you want to reach a very moist and delicious sponge, don't forget, just a little bit of oil, 250 mils is enough, and then blueberries as well, and then I have my butter for mixing later. So we start by sifting all the dry ingredients. This cake is very easy to make as you just mix everything in the bowl. No need to whisk the egg separately and sugar separately, no. Everything straight to the bowl. You can also add lemon zest if you want. Baking, you can be very creative with baking, but make sure that the measurements are correct. So now we are transferring our moist, tasty and aroma full, if there's something like that, to our baking tray. So I use my butter so that my cake doesn't stick and then it comes out perfectly. It's ready to go to the oven. Open your oven, 180 degrees Celsius preheated oven right in the center. After 15 minutes, you can open and put a skewer. If it's not clean, it's not ready. If it's clean, the cake is ready, but 20 minute max. So while it's cooling down, we have our cream cheese and butter here that we're gonna mix nicely. Make sure that you don't just throw in hard butter in your blender or mixer because you're gonna break. This is nice, perfect to be the spread on top of amazing cake. Everyone will be licking fingers like this. And then we take our frosting, we apply it right in the center of our cake. And then we take another piece, we put it on top of this one. This is our cake. The smell of this cake is amazing. If you have icing sugar to dust, you can do that to make it more fun and more fancy. If your family is divided by those who like sweet or savory, then Chef has the perfect salad to bring them together. 
Now we are making our delicious watermelon and feta salad. There's a lot of color in this salad. Remember it's Christmas, Christmas themed food. So we have red from the watermelon, we have white from the feta, and we have green from the salad greens. Remember watermelon is sweet and feta cheese is salty and imagine those flavors in your mouth out of this world. Oh, love it. Now this is everybody's favorite whole roasted chicken with some vegetables some whole grain mustard some garlic and ginger portuguese chicken spice some olive oil and lemon for flavor rosemary for flavor and a lot of butter butter makes your chicken more juicy and moist make sure and it gives it more flavor sprinkle my portuguese chicken spice you just sprinkle 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 then you add whole grain mustard don't forget your lemon you zest it or you just cut it in half and then you squeeze it on top of your chicken preheated oven 200 degrees celsius for 30 minutes to one hour linda's no fuss approach speaks to the heart and it's earned him a devoted family of television viewers Food is a perfect love language. It's like giving someone a rose unexpectedly. So when all my favorite people, my relatives and my family gathered around the table, especially in December, it's everything to me because we normally don't get time during the year, we're all busy. So when we are feasting on one table as a family, that's heaven on earth. We often do this almost every year. During Easter, we gather Linda Cooks. Um, Christmas time, we gather Linda Cooks. My favorite thing is was chicken, and it was tender, juicy. And the thing that I like when you put the sauce on top, yo, my mouth was so watering, something like, you know, when you're eating something like you so long, but Linda's chicken, it was like that. Today, what stood out for me was the cake. It was so moist, so delicious. I really loved it and I really enjoyed it. The blueberries, oh, delicious. I wish I can just have another piece right now. I'm so happy about the outcome of the food today because everyone seemed happy, especially the cake. There are a lot of compliments based on the cake. They said it's moist. The cream cheese frosting, they say it's smooth. When my people are happy, I am happy. My restaurant is coming out, guys. Be on the lookout. My cookbook, only few, 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 few guns or shots to my cookbook. Watch this space. <laughs> Whether it's via his recipes or his new eatery, here's to a year in which you too get to sit at Chef Linda's table. Up next, Jonathan Boynton Lee tries out for the role of tour guide in the Seychelles. One destination guaranteed to get you in the festive spirit is the Seychelles. Even better is hearing that there is a direct flight from Joburg to the capital Mahe. So booking their flight without delay were TV personality and filmmaker Jonathan Boynton Lee joined by photographer and content creator Gabriella Benedict. Their first stop would be an absolute feast for the eyes. Okay, so where are you taking me? It's a surprise. You gotta be patient. Seychelles is all about hidden treasures, it's not just about beautiful beaches, okay? How beautiful is that? This is amazing. Paradise, right? Literally. Look and, how blue the water is. And your first time? Yeah. It's so cool. I love experiencing a place for the first time with someone else. How many? Through their eyes, not my first time. <laughs> how many times have you been here? A number of times. The last time was, of course, Tropica, that epic adventure, mm -hmm. which ended in heartbreak, but it was still an epic adventure. But yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you around. I'm looking forward to you experiencing the untouched paradise that is the Seychelles, because that's the biggest thing with Seychelles. It's got the sense of being completely untouched. It's probably one of the most protected countries in the world. And that's why it looks like it does. It's, it's just paradise. Well, for the first part, you definitely picked a good one. Yeah, you've got to get an overview. 115 islands make up the Seychelles. Mm -hmm. Some of the oldest volcanic islands in the world. And I'm here all week for more information on the Seychelles. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, how lucky is this? I know. And do you ever just like take a moment and breathe and feel the gratitude of we get to experience things like this? We are so fortunate to be yeah. able to see this for ourselves. Incredible. Another piece of paradise. Capture the memories. Just breathe it all in. I'm most looking forward to being able to dip my toes into that blue crystal water. Yeah, I know you want to be down there, but yeah. I thought let's start up here. Um, we're not going down yet, I'm afraid. There's still one more stop up here to make. Where's that? Got a bit of culture and history to take you through now. Oh, okay. It's important. It is. But, uh, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Culture yeah. stuff. Can't wait to learn. There's plenty of that in the island's tribute to the formal abolition of slavery almost 200 years ago. Okay, you ready? Next stop, Mission Lodge. Very special place in Seychelles. The heritage site visited by Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah, inaugurated by Queen Elizabeth II herself. Here's the Liberated Slaves Monument. UNESCO heritage site, this World Heritage Site. So I know you've been here before, but obviously you know why this is one of the top places that I really wanted to visit mm. while we were here because of the beautiful story. Yeah. And how they gave an education to all the liberated African slaves. They gave work to the men. Yeah. And funny enough, two of the subjects that they used to study here was carpentry and gardenry. Yeah. And I mean, look at the place, you yeah, can I kind mean, of understand why. It's crazy in the old ruins of the school building here. And it's one of those places where you can just sense that energy, mm. that history. Like yeah. you can hear the children playing. Imagine Very being a slave your whole life, like only knowing captivity. And then you get to live in this paradise. Like this is how you experience freedom for the first time. This is Gandalf. It's a cinnamon tree. It's hundreds of years old. When was the last time you hugged a tree? It's been a while. <laughs> come, hug, come hug Gandalf. <laughs> Feel the energy of the place. But put your face right up against the, the, the tree there. Just appreciate the moment. Why don't I trust the, you? Feel the energy of Gandalf. Think of the things this tree's seen over hundreds of years. Oh, so now Gandalf is a lot softer than what I remember the last time. He's growing extra moss. Okay. It's like a real little velvety pillow. It's how amazing does it feel though, eh? It's like lying on a bed of like... Moss. It's like a cloud. You know there are trees called sensitive trees in Seychelles. If they get like one scratch, they die. I'm not even kidding. What? Yeah. Oh, nature always providing. How perfect is this for a bench? It is literally a bench. It's mahogany wood. They make furniture out of it. I'm not even joking. Oh wow, really? Yeah. I just read that behind you on the... <laughs> but seriously, it's mahogany wood. Very big. They make furniture out of it. Oh, pineapple! Jeez, like I thought we were being attacked by a fruit bat or something. That reaction. <laughs> How cool is that? I've never seen a pineapple like... I've never seen a pineapple Other than on my grown. plate. Don't pick it. I was in there just testing to see if it was ripe. I'm pretty sure it's like a, like a heritage pineapple. You can't touch it and stuff. You can pick a few cinnamon leaves to brew yourself a cuppa, where Her Majesty did 41 years ago. Okay, you ready? Born ready. Just like the Queen enjoyed it, straight off her Britannia yacht. Yes. Yeah, the Royal Yacht. Don't forget the Pinky. Pinky that. Yes. <laughs> Charles. 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 So the last time I was here was the rewards challenge for Tropica, mm -hmm. but we couldn't really enjoy it because it was like the next day we were going back to another challenge. Yeah, oh, shame. So this time I can at least <laughs> relax a bit and take it all in without stressing about what tomorrow's challenge is going to be and, and who's going to be doing what and who's going to be going home. Much nicer to enjoy some cinnamon tea. For the spice, seafood and veg which make local cooking so good, the Sir Selwyn Selwyn Clark Market can't be beat. So market's always my favorite place to completely immerse yourself in a place's culture and taste all the local fruits and the vegetables. This is the one called the Germalac that I've been wanting to taste for a while. I haven't tasted it before. You only get it in Seychelles. So you want to go first? Yeah. It smells quite bitter. Very unexpected taste. It tastes like a combination between an apple and a berry. Yeah. I need something that's a bit more sweet. How about some coconut water? Mmm. Doesn't get any fresher than this, straight out the coconut. Yeah. Are you going to hack it up? No. <laughs> it's too dangerous. Here we go. There's the sour sauce. There's the sour sauce? Yeah. This one. Hi. Hi. Can we Enjoy? try this? Is it ripe? No, it's not right. In two days, it's going to be ready to eat. Two days? Yeah. Two days. Yeah. It'll be worth the wait. Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, they're so good. It's probably my favorite fruit. Really? Been waiting a year to taste this. Yeah, Thank you. yeah no, it's so good. I can't even describe the taste to you. 
Between the two of us, I'm definitely the cook. John's the eater. Yeah. That's right. You don't go to the market much, eh? What are you talking about? In Seychelles? Uh, <laughs> smells and overwhelming the senses must make you very happy, right? As a chef. Yeah, all my senses are feeling very overwhelmed at this market. I'm feeling like I need to get back in the kitchen. <laughs> Another ingredient so popular in Creole cooking is rum, produced right here at Rita Dolfe's Family Distillery. Hi. Hi, welcome. How are you? Nice Hi. to meet you, Jonathan. Jonathan, I'm Rieta. How's Gabby. it going? Hi, Gabby. Welcome to La Plaine Saint Andre. This old building you actually arrived at now, it looks a little bit like a horse stable, mm. but this old building is actually where they used to make coconut oil and copra for exports. Okay, and cool. as an old heritage site, we actually try to preserve the history here. The building is old, it dates back to 1792, wow. but the distillery itself is actually 21 years old. And we've got a 100 year lease from the government of Seychelles to be able to operate the distillery from here. It's an impressive operation, given that the Dorfey family began distilling with little more than a book and a spirit of experimentation. So after distillation, you want to age your rum in barrels. So we've got about 23 different types of barrels that we use. We use three types of bourbon casks uh, that we age in for three years before it's blended into the other uh, barrels that we use. And that's where all those unique flavors come from. Oh yes, and the oak itself is very high in sugar, the actual wood itself. Now this is a really special room, it's a library of rum. So check out ages, you can go light, straight out the barrel, and then a couple of years, and the more you age it, it gets darker and darker. And this is the way all the magic happens, check it out. The master blender sits with the brothers, and they sample different tastes and different spices and everything, and then they combine them to what we finally taste. And this is obviously the different types of charring. Yeah, <laughs> and they can, can't get it across the table. <laughs> that they do inside the barrels that we were talking about earlier. So yeah. it's obviously medium, light, and then fully charred. Interesting, eh? Yeah. Does it smell like anything? Kind of. Yeah, they're different, yes. different smells because the different smells are released the more you char it, I guess. Adding to the adventure, the flavors in your choice of rum are then made to sing with bar manager Edel Leach, mixing in herbs and spices fresh from the garden. Here we go, guys. Thank you. Here we have our house rum sour made with a cinnamon syrup from local cinnamon trees, as well as a split base of our rum zen and our overproof rum. And for our non-drinker, we have our house made lemongrass lemonade with a lemongrass syrup made from citronelle straight from our garden mixed with a simple syrup lemon juice and some soda water amazing thank you these look so refreshing guess the non-drinker <laughs> <laughs> <Guess the drinker. laughs> cheers cheers this is the dream mate eh? to have like a garden where you can just go pick stuff and make things here's the lemongrass right yeah this is the lemongrass yeah just pick some there for me i want to smell it Oh, it's a beautiful smell. Smells like my drink, yeah. Literally. Fresh. Let's talk about a fresh drink. <laughs> Cheers. How cool is that? Drinking cool. a, a drink made in this garden, pretty mm. much. Made from ingredients taken straight from the garden. This abundance of local product and fresh island produce is on offer daily at Layla Resort, John and Gabby's home for their stay. It was clear they'd chosen wisely. Wow. How beautiful. I know. Welcome by all the greenery. That's beautiful, that's like a ship. I really feel relaxed. Good afternoon, welcome to the resort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Much needed after today. I know. More refreshing lemongrass juice. I'm going to turn into a lemongrass. It's starting to smell like a lemongrass. <laughs> okay, I'll grab the bags. All right. You go check out the room. Cool. But you got to give them the full top billing tour. Hey, you've watched enough presenting videos. You know what you're doing. Fortunately, you know I've learned from the best. I'll do all the hard graft. <laughs> You just need to show them the room, okay? Easy peasy. All right, are you ready to check out the room with me? Let's go. Yeah. Right, so things that I look for in a room when I travel is closet space, which as you can see, there seems to be ample amounts. Even space to put my suitcase, which is a bonus. Coming through to the bedroom, love the attention to detail, especially welcoming with these beautiful designs on the bed, and I can already tell that I'm gonna have a good night's sleep right here. If I'm not mistaken, this should Close if you're looking for some privacy from the bathroom. I love this headboard where they've just done this little rope detail. 
beautiful. Right, so this room overlooking the ocean, literally a stone's throw from the beach. Where's John? Oh my word. This is typical Jonathan behavior. He's in the pool. John! With the Indian Ocean a balmy 28 degrees this time of year, Mr. Boynton Lee isn't about to confine himself to the hotel pool. So tune in again to find out where in the Seychelles his and Gabby's festive getaway takes them next. Just ahead, a new anthem from the Mzansi Youth Choir and a house built from cookies. Sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests. And the winner is... Max! <laughs> Landing the title of Tastemaster was the cherry on the cake of Maxine Scalin's thriving career as a mindfulness mentor, entrepreneur, and foodie. Sup, insider lovers. I'm Max, winner of Tastemaster season four. I can't wait to spend the day with you. Welcome to my house and my peaceful space. I think I started baking probably before I could even write properly. My gran would teach us how to make cookies and fudge when I was four or five years old. And I actually have memories of exploding pink. I think I was trying to make pink cocoa pops and they exploded out the oven and it was all over the wall. And so I really do feel lucky that I was also given free reign from such a young age to really explore food. The Taste Master journey was actually just so incredible. I went in completely open-minded, no expectation. And I think just with the desire to have fun and be creative, which is absolutely how it turned out for me. And it really was better than what I could have imagined. I think when you haven't been on a TV show like that, you can't really conceptualize all that goes into it. But when you like take part in it, it is so expensive. And I look at what we created over that period of time, all of us, the contestants, and the things we produced, and the places we went, and things we learned, and it is just such a rich, rich experience. As mother of this chemistry grad turned TV star, Debbie Sunderland saw this coming. Uh, Maxie General was an overachiever and her baking, she kind of took over the kitchen probably. <laughs> I wasn't well when she was little and during that time she sort of took over the house and the kitchen. <laughs> her first ever cooking experience was with a pot in the microwave with food colouring and something else. I didn't even know this story. I did say something <laughs> exploded. Was it pink? Yes, it was pink. And I, I got a picture that. in hospital saying, I don't know if you're going to be happy with this, but your whole kitchen has exploded in pink. I think with Max, nothing comes as a surprise. <laughs> She's, she'll phone me and say, tomorrow I'm opening a coffee shop. Do you know of a venue? Or even when she was little, she'd say, I'm doing a cross country today and I absolutely have to win. So when she said to me, I want to do the taste master. I said, well, what is the family motto? And she said, in it to win it. Yes, now go home and win it. So it was a lot of fun, but I felt very stressed. I felt like I was going through the taste master, waiting for the results and living it with her. But it was such an awesome experience. I've always been very conscious of my mind and how it's actually really creating my reality. And so practices that bring awareness to what my mind is doing, what my body is doing, and consciousness to all of that and how all these things interplay has always been super fascinating to me. As someone who actually had, I have OCD, and so it was very difficult for me to understand my mind when I was younger. And so it was actually then, about 10 years ago, that I was introduced to mindfulness, meditation, and that journey just really transformed my life. And 10 years later, I've studied a postgrad in mindfulness. I teach it and the way that I think about the world and yeah, create my experience is completely different. Max's friends have watched her create a successful baking premixes company while losing none of her love for simple pleasures like building cookie houses with the girls. I love throwing parties or dinners for my family and friends. They're just such a fun way to bring people together and I tend to do it around food, of course. One of the things I like to do are include fun activities. So of course, today we are building cookie houses inspired by the Taste Master Cookie House episode. 
contest decoration spaces you can put on temporary tattoos or little diamantes and just get fun in what you're wearing um, but other tips I think for throwing a really fun party would be to have a sick music. We have a DJ here today obviously because it is a house party and just think about all the elements. So I like to include plants and fresh greenery normally often there's incense growing so it smells beautiful as well and just make the whole space actually look beautiful. With some bubbly for inspiration, the build began. The contestants including Max's gran, Dawn Hartzenberg. I was also a baker, so when she came to my house, I said, Gran, let's bake, let's bake. So she was always wanting to be in the kitchen and baking. I'm very proud of her. It's actually quite funny to be making a cookie house after doing the cookie house episode on Tastemaster. This is a lot more peaceful than that experience was. And of course, the cookie house is about a tenth of the size because Molly and Sejo and I made a pud style about that large. But it's definitely, I think, my architectural skills that I used on the challenge are coming in handy now because my house is looking cute. And yeah, it's just really nice to be doing this again. And I think it's something I will do yearly. It was so much fun. I mean, like, I've never had a friend on TV, first of all. And um, second of all, like, Max is just, like, she's completely herself on camera. It was crazy that, like, I thought, you know, she would be, like, a, a different variation of herself, but it was just so Maxine. And I had so much fun. I actually ended up trying to, like, bake things while I was watching her. I got my family involved. Everyone was watching her. My friends were watching her. So it's just really exciting to have her on that. Yeah, and she did so well. It was really impressive. Watching Max on Tastemaster was very exciting, especially I was on the first episode. Max said, can I come and bake some scones at your house? And the next minute, SABC and all the cameras were there. I was totally overwhelmed, but it was fun. I'm really enjoying the Cookie House house party. Um, Max's is going to be better than all of ours, obviously. She's <laughs> done it before, <laughs> but it's always fun to be involved and Max throws the best parties. Life after Tastemaster is a lot of fun. I get to add some foodie presenting on Espresso Morning Show to things that I'm up to. I'm also developing food products in the kitchen at the moment, which is really, really lovely. And most of the time I'm actually running my online platform where we do courses and classes all related to women kind of stepping into their full queen energy. So it's a place where personal growth meets spirituality and there's loads of courses, classes and content all related to this. Building a life as delicious and festive as it is mindful, that's the Max Scalen way. That festive anthem sung by the Mzansi Youth Choir is a celebration of self-belief, no matter the obstacles in your way. And it embodies Capitec's vision of a nation where better never rests. Our collaboration with the Mzansi Youth Choir actually started a few months ago. And right from the get-go, we were so excited and so grateful for the opportunity to collaborate with them. And of course, with Sadumo, the choir director, who was able to take the lyrics and the synopsis we gave him and craft it into something that went way beyond our expectations. And of course, the choir is known all over the world for their youthful and vibrant and diverse performances. And it just gave us yet another opportunity to support local initiatives that drives positive change and resilience in South Africa. The story of the Mzanzi Youth Choir is just such a big inspiration. Here's this little small community project that uh, rose all the way up to this massive global stage in a talent competition and they stole the hearts of the world at that point in time and I think we just found that they represent that spirit of South Africa and that spirit of Capitec and we wanted to partner with them for that reason. There's two components of the song that really stands out for me. The first one is that this is truly a song of hope. And it's a song of hope for everyone in South Africa. It's a song that can pull people together. It builds a spirit, it builds a chies, it builds something that represents our DNA. And secondly, it speaks about that ethos of better never rest. That ethos of always striving for something better. And those are the two things that really make this unique and makes this powerful. In the heart of South Africa, under the sun's warm embrace, 
the song that was done in collaboration with the Nzanzi Youth Choir is a song of hope. It's a song that speaks to resilience, just like the South African people. And for me, it's a song that continues to inspire me to try and be my best despite the odds. Strategically, the collaboration reinforces Capitec's message of breaking barriers and conquering the world stage in that it is a symbolic representation of overcoming barriers. If you look at the Mzanzi Youth Choir, they've done so much on the world stage today, which is really also what Capitec is about. It's also about youth empowerment and recognizing that the youth are the future of this country. They are the future of who we are. Being a part of this choir has changed my life in so many different ways because at least I have something to do with my life and I'm doing something that I love which is music and I have the greatest family and the biggest supporters in this choir. In the, rhythms of the, land. the choir has changed my life in so many different ways like I learned discipline, I learned values, I learned to love, I gained a family in the choir and I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for the choir. When we talk about the production of the song, it was a toil order, but the product that we're sending to Capitec is just an, a product that we're proud of, and we hope that they're gonna love it and enjoy it. And if we could see every staff member, jiving, vibing, having fun. That's all that mattered, but most of all, if they could carry the lyrics and the music that is embodied there in whatever they do as a company, that would be stunning. Music talks. Music is like an actor. Every song has a different mood. Every song has a different message. Every song tells a story. So if we are on stage, we also need to tell a story. Music entertains the ear, but the dance entertains the eye. Once you combine both of that together on stage, in that way, the audience will feel you from their heart. Great. It's, it's been a successful year, it's a great event, it's great to mix with the people from the branches to head office and just really to connect with one another, share the stories, share the milestones, love it. It's been an amazing day and the weather is on our side as well. The performance by the Mzanzi Youth Choir was really inspiring, really amazing. It's so nice to see the youth coming together and doing such an amazing job. Properly inspiring performance from the choir. Um, I think it's really great to see a bunch of young, energetic people who represent our brand value so well. To see them on a stage and to see them just wowing the crowd and just that energy coming through has just been amazing to see today. Wow, that was energizing, it was powerful, it was honest. And the magic is really when you look at the people's faces around you and you see people dancing to the beat and singing along, that's when you know you've got something that is truly powerful and it was fantastic to see. I've got one message for South Africa. We're such a beautiful country, a country with so much potential, so much passion, so much art, so much culture, so many resources. And uh, if we all stand together, we can do phenomenal things. So this is a message of hope, but also a message of taking action. We think South Africa should make a difference, stand together, and together we can make this one phenomenal country that the rest of the world will notice. Founded in Soweto in 2003, by never resting in its quest to be better, the Mzansi Youth Choir has inspired the world. Take your first step to doing the same, with a chance to win 1,000 Rand courtesy of Capitec. To enter, reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms and tell us how Capitec has helped you break barriers using the hashtag Better Never Rests. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Next up, a working mother of four launches her first fashion line and it's simply fireworks. Sponsored by Capitec. Better never rests.
Designer Zulfa Isaacs believes women don't need a special occasion to be bold in their outfit choices. So she's put everything she's learned about the South African fashion industry into her own new brand of women's wear. Hello Inside SA. Please come inside. Welcome to my home. I'm a mother to four teenagers and I'm a designer starting a business. So juggling all those balls, it's a busy life. I wake up at about half past five in the morning. I really enjoy doing Pilates. I do it about three to four times a week and it just kind of centers me to get ready for the day. I've been in the clothing industry for close to three decades and I've just started a women's wear clothing line called Francis Woman. It's a premium brand for women who have identities of their own, who are elegant, sophisticated, who want to feel comfortable and not be dictated to by what the fashion trends are. It is 100% South African, made by South African women, designed by a South African women, supplied by a South African fabric manufacturer. So it's a very proudly South African. It's the right time now for me to be launching this range. I understand myself a lot better. I'm more comfortable with who I am and what I am able to give other women. I think I understand women better and women's needs. I have the wisdom of knowing what's a fad and what has longevity. It's quite an emancipating feeling. You just are who you are. That's what I want this range to be. The first woman to really influence me was my paternal grandmother. She was a dressmaker and a single mom to five. So she worked really hard, but she was always gracious. She was always elegant. She was always well put together. She also taught me the value of working hard and doing everything to the absolute best of your ability. You know, she used to give me fabric to play with when, while she was sewing and I'd make little Barbie outfits and be very frustrated that it's not exactly the way it's supposed to be. But it's in my genes and it started before I even knew it. What I like about doing my own range is that I am able to do what I think authentically. It's non-negotiable. I try to get the best fabrics, the best CMT, the best finishes. And from my side, obviously, from a design input, I actually physically sit in the garments. I walk, I move my arms to see that that level of comfort and perfection from my side is also executed. Zelda is wearing a sleeveless cotton crochet dress with a bias cut black slip cami dress underneath. We've teamed it up with my kick flare pants and more casual looking shoes. They're comfortable, but she just looks so chic. So I love it because it is sophisticated, but with a little edge and I'm always looking for edge. So this is perfect. What Lisa's wearing today is a sheer overcoat. It's organdy. She's wearing a sleeveless underdress, just made of a matte satin. And what I like about the sheer coat is that it is very versatile. You can wear it as Lisa's wearing it, very elegantly and very smart. Or it could be dressed down with a pair of jeans, a strappy t-shirt, a pair of sneakers. Zelda is wearing her favorite outfit. It's an oversized bomber jacket with side pockets, matching with a brocade gold metallic skirt. It's kind of like a mermaid type of skirt, but it just accentuates your hips, but then kind of evens out at the bottom to just balance your body shape. Lisa's wearing the same skirt, but she's wearing it in the smarter way. Um, and here I've paired it with just a classic white shirt and an edge-to-edge -edge brocade jacket. What I really like is the layered look, which hides all our areas which needs a little bit of forgiveness. Judging by this turnout, Zulfa is onto something. Today is the launch of my brand and label, Francis Women. It's a culmination of many, many long hours of hard work and grit, but ultimately it's a dream come true. I'm finally doing what I want to do and I'm going to be 50 next year, so I figured it's now or never. 
It's a South African can-do spirit which Zulfa shares with jewellery designer Julia Kuvadia. I'm a revert to Islam. I became Muslim about 20 years ago and I sort of recognized that there wasn't much that you could buy as a Muslim that sort of represented your love for your faith and I thought that jewelry is just such a special thing to wear that shows who you are. My collection is very much inspired by Arabic Islam, the beauty of Islamic architecture and the calligraphy. The thing I like most about the Francis range is the mix of fabrications that you use, the very high quality satins, the different textures, the ability to layer the range. The clothing was beautiful, timeless, classic and chic. The lines were very elegant and I would say really effortless to wear. The Rainbow Show was fabulous. It was fantastic. It's sophisticated but also quite comfortable. And I can actually see myself in quite a few of these pieces. I love the gold skirt. I think the gold skirt and the gold little bomber jacket can be worn up or down. So I like that. I love that the fabric is quite rich and it looks sophisticated. And you can play with it according to your personality. I've known Zulfa for 23 years and I really just admire the way she genuinely actually understands women and I think that's why her range is so good. It really was a range of clothing that women can relate to in whatever way they see it and be able to dress it up in a way that they actually feel themselves. I thought it was a range that you could invest in and wear for many years and allow the clothing to become almost your favorite item. It went beyond what I thought how it would go. I'm, I'm very happy, I'm very excited and the feedback so far is that they really like it and they, they enjoyed the function, so I'm very pleased. Designed by a woman for a woman with identities of their own, these sweeping silhouettes are a statement for local fashion in the year to come. Coming up, Artist Athankosi Quinana's albinism is just another shade of the rainbow. Through almost 30 years of the Rainbow Nation, attitudes towards our fellow citizens living with albinism have remained among our last prejudices. It is artist Athankosi Quinana's quest to change that, one magnificent image at a time. I was born in the Eastern Cape in Mtata. I am a black woman living with albinism. I am a visual activist. I make artworks primarily in drawing and printmaking that aim to create constructive representation on issues related to albinism. The daughter of two teachers and oldest of three children, Athan Korsi has used her life experience as a learning opportunity for the wider community. I lived with both my grandparents, like I was always buzzing with people. And I think when I started attending school and interacting with people outside of my grandmother's house, I started realizing that, okay, I am not like the average person. So I was exposed to a lot of very painful experiences. I at times found myself questioning my abilities as a person to be able to carry out my life. I just knew, well, okay, you know what? I am different and I will have to get used to it. Watching her child transform the language of inclusivity into the picture of it makes Shumikazi Quinana a proud mother. What I admire about my daughter right now is where she is in terms of her mental position. She's headstrong, she's bold, she's confident. She's not shy to go out and do whatever she wants to do. Of course, as a mother, I'm proud. I'm so happy that she has defied the odds with her challenges with vision. But the fact that she's been able to challenge herself in that space is something that then, to me as a mother, gives me comfort. As the eldest of three children, Athan Kosi's talent and drive has earned her sister Namgaso's respect. Obviously, with all siblings, it starts off rocky. We grew up fighting a lot, <laughs> but we've like come to understand each other. And I think she's probably one of my best friends now. 
how I help Ati out is by being her logistics person. <laughs> I drive her around, I get her supplies, I help her get supplies, I help her get to her exhibitions. And then I also take pictures for her Instagram page. People living with albinism have issues affecting their eyesight, but Miss Quinana more than compensates with her artistic vision. So I found myself in a space where I'm like, okay, you know what? Images play a very vital role in how we communicate every single day. With this particular work, I talk about myself, but I incorporated my retina, um, which is a picture from my optometrist. <laughs> And what I've done is I've actually drawn the retina, the background of my artwork, but I've done that using bubbles. And that kind of talks about the issue, but it has a playful effect. You know, as an artist with a visual impairment, there are some challenges, but in this work, I'm saying, you know, take it on. The sky's the limit. As we were to discover, Afan Kosi may be a printmaker, but she sees things on a cinematic scale. I am a huge fan of very large scales, as you can see. So how I go about this is I buy a clean plate, which usually looks this clean. I attach the printed out image on the bottom and I go over the outlines that I want. I use this particular blade and I scratch on my surface. So my darker areas are places where I scratch the most and my lighter areas are areas that I do not scratch at all. I would apply ink for a dry point plate and from there I would put it on from corner to corner. The whole plate has to be black. In wiping back, I need the, the scraped areas to sink in to, to pull in the ink and then I put it through a press and what the image will look like is this. Since gaining her master's, this um Tata born talent has signed with a renowned gallery and is showcasing her work in group exhibitions and art fairs, both locally and abroad. I am a huge fan of surrealism. I like when it is used for topics. It kind of puts a playful effect into uh, the subject matter or the themes that I'm exploring. I work with a very sensitive topic already and so when I come up with my ideas and what should be in the images, I need to find topics and themes and tropes that already embody positivity. Bees are a, a symbol of good luck. So when I create my body of work, I incorporate such things. So when you look at the image, you already get the idea that, okay, this is welcoming. Life is beautiful, so enjoy it, says an artist we can all be proud of. And anyone who still has an issue with albinism, get over it. Another feel-good production.